So if you're here, it's probably because you're preparing for your PRI professional review interview for ING or CENG. So in my last video where I discuss about the application procedure which has almost 10,000 views, ask me one single question that is how do we prepare for the PRI and or what to expect during the PRI so in this video I'm gonna discuss just that giving you tips and the questions they asked me during my ING So a little bit about myself, I'm an aeronautical engineer and I got my ING a couple of months ago. It's definitely last year but I can't remember the exact date. But I do remember I did wrote down all the questions they asked, maybe not all, some of the questions they asked and in this video I'm gonna I share those questions with you. And also throughout the video I'll be giving important tips to make sure that you're fully prepared for your interview. So let's get started. So I went with Royal Aeronautical Society because I believe it would make sense for me to go with them because I'm an aeronautical engineer and they're in my domain. But there is no restriction if you are if you are an aeronautical engineer who wants to go with IMAC, you can do so. So I assume at this stage you have got the email from whatever the body you applied with saying you've been elected for the PRI professional review interview and you are all ready which means I assume that you have sent the QRF to them and they have assessed it and told you that okay your QRF is good to go we are going to give do the interview with you so and for those who doesn't know about uh, the UK specs it's a document it's a framework that states all the requirements all the all the engineering skills and knowledge that you need to have in order to apply for ING or CENG or even ENG tech so and for ENG tech you don't have an interview for ING and CENG you do have an interview so the UK spec is divided into five main parts on the A you have knowledge and understanding which talks more about your qualifications and it's it's an overview about you and your skills and how far you have come in your engineering career and b is design development and solving engineering problems as the title suggests it is where they talk about what have you done as an engineer and what are the different problems you have solved as an engineer on your role c is responsibility management and leadership so this is the place you put all your management skills and your leadership skills and things you have done, all the responsibilities you hold. So if you are a senior engineer who manage junior engineers, well, this is one of the sections to add that experience and knowledge in the UK specs. D is communication and interpersonal skills. It talks about any meetings you've done and how well do you communicate with other engineers and are you able to clearly communicate with people who are not native to your language so it's it's all about how well you communicate because communication is key when it comes to engineering and the last one is e which is the professional commitment here you discuss about different code of conduct uh, royal Aeronautical society as well as your workplace ethics and stuff like that so that's your basic overview of the uk specs now the interview so the interview is around 45 minutes and there'll be two interviewers you'll be there in a room or maybe virtually i think they do it virtually now because i i did it virtually and after the interview is completed they'll give their results or the outcome of the interview in two weeks time so the first question uh well it's not actually a question they ask uh, just like formal interviews um it was a conversation building up to an interview so they did know my name uh, they did know my experience from the qualifying report and all i did was i answered the question simply by introducing myself telling my past experience my current experience and also the qualifications i have and the qualification i'm upskilling to which i'm doing an msc and i did uh, to my short term and long term goals and from there they moved on to the second question which was tell us about your last msc module and how did you apply it in your current role at that time the module i had completed was the human factors for aircraft maintenance and we learned about how uh, human factors apply for designers as well as in the maintenance engineers who actually work on the shop floor 
and also we did a lot of examples with bow tie analysis and hash facts and all sort of things so in this question i i did mention that i i, do, I got the opportunity to create a bow tie at my work so and i built my answer from there so if you're still watching this video i assume that this video carries some value so make sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this and if you already subscribed thank you very much let's get on with the rest of the video so tip number one considering the first two questions replace v with i if you have been part of a group and if you have completed work as part of a group just make sure that you clarify or clearly mention what you did and what they did because it's about you and uh, it's not about team method so you have to make sure everything you say it's about you and make sure that you clearly define during the interview what they did or what your rest of your group did and what what responsibilities you had in this project or a task so the third question was about problem solving uh, the exact question they asked me was tell us a time that you identified reviewed and select techniques methods and processes to solve a problem i had a nice example on my qrf where i fabricated a shim so i did mention that i identified a faulty shim and then i did review the options that i have number one is the shim needs replacing so can i do we have stock at the stores so i checked with the stores there was no stock so i had to get, take the correct procedures and fabricate it so this was one of the things that i wrote i used my skills knowledge to actually solve a problem so that was my third question tip number two the interview will take place in a formulated way it will have its flow so they will assess you starting from competency a b c and nobody will start from competency that's not how it works so it's okay to keep a copy of your qrf if you're doing it uh, via teams or skype keep a digital copy on your screen and if you're doing face to face keep a hard copy next it is okay to refer to that document while the interview is going it is not a closed book interview it's an open conversation as i said and you can refer to the QRF anytime. So question number four, I'm not clearly sure what they asked me here because I can't remember. Uh, they asked me about design development of an engineering solutions. And I, I vaguely remember speaking about a process and how I improved the process. So that was question number four. Tip number three is don't be nervous, just relax. I know it's easier said than done. I was very nervous before my interview, but the minute I opened the screen and I saw the interviewers, they were very calm and they, they were very engaging with you. So you have nothing to worry about. Just relax and have a good conversation with them because the QRF contain your experience, not their experience. Yes, they have checked into your experience, but you know what you have done so just simply have a conversation about that it's about a conversation with peers with another engineer tell them why you're a good engineer and why you should get ieng and they're not looking to fail you they are simply looking ways to pass you they're trying to make sure that you are a competent engineer so don't be nervous so the fifth question was relating to code of conduct they asked me whether i've read the royal Antarctic society code of conduct and what other code of conduct that i'm adhering to and what does that mean to me so the answer to question number five was a yes because i did read the code of conduct of royal Antarctic society before i went into the interview and also i did read my workplace code of conduct and for the question how would i adhere to them or what do they mean to me i took a couple of questions on, on few regulations that i'm using when i'm working uh when during my time as an air support equipment engineer i used to refer to lower regulations to do some tasks so i did use these examples to uh, satisfy this question so the sixth question was what do you know about a safe system of work and how would you apply them in a real world so this question was very easy for me to answer because i came from an aircraft maintenance background and i did mention to have a safe system of work you need competent people and you need approved documentation you need approved tooling and equipment and also you have to have safe 
environment and then I match them up to a simple task that I did. So the seventh question was something relating to sustainable development. I'm pretty sure they asked how, how what did I do to improve sustainability or something along those lines. I'm very sorry I can't remember the question. So and the answer to that question was I remember saying that I repaired something uh, using the resources I have and preventing ordering a new part because what happens when you order a new part is that new raw materials has to be used in order to produce that new part so in this case i have reused the parts i have which is contributing to sustainability you, and you can say small things like reusing materials also for example you had a glove you did a task and it was not that dirty and you reused that gloves again so you are reducing waste so I'm pretty sure for sustainability you can find many things and you have contributed in a lot of ways like using digital documents rather than printing materials and mate I can't remember but I'm pretty sure you have contributed to sustainability in some way so make sure you collate them here. So the eighth question was regarding CPD continuing professional development and I remember telling them I'm doing my masters and this masters would help me to get my CN chartered engineering status as well as this would help me to get to the next stage of my career which is level three management level and which is an engineer management role basically and you can mention anything from your training and what you have done in your spare time if you have been teaching a student that goes under STEM as well and if you have been doing certain educational uh, qualifications completing educational qualifications to help you get to that next level that's compiled of CPD and also have a personal action plan which I do I keep a record on what courses I've done and how I can use those courses to get to my next level so is keeping an action plan would help you in this sense question number nine is active quality improvements well I'm very sorry I can't remember the answer to the question uh, the answer I gave but this question simply asks you what improvements have you done to an existing process or even a procedure if there's something that was not right in your workplace and you actually improved it and this this is the place to present that uh, task number 10 is diversity and inclusion and how would you apply that in your given role well my answer was i've been working in the four different countries with four different backgrounds four different languages and there was this time that we worked on a project and i was leading a team of sri lankans and we had one foreigner and given that the universal aviation language is english i had to make sure that i speak english because we had one foreigner in our team and we could have easily communicated in sri lankan and that actually fulfilled the inclusive part inclusive part so these can be any example when you are working in a diverse group you make sure you do everything to make everyone included in the work you are doing so i'm, I'm pretty sure you can find many examples around there well this concludes my video and these are some of the questions I was asked and I can't guarantee well nobody can guarantee these are the same questions that they'll ask you but this will help you to get a taste of that interview process what are the type of questions they ask and how hard it is it is not hard at all it's just a conversation and the last tip I can give you is know your qualifying report very well know what is in there and make sure those things that is in there you have personally completed them because interviewers can ask cross questions one of the questions that i was asked in one of the tasks was okay was the aircraft aog and i was like since i knew what happened i was able to answer that question but if it comes to you if, if it comes at you at a surprise you might not be able to answer so be well prepared you know read about read your qualifying report over and over again make sure you read the code of conduct of royal Aeronautical society and be well prepared and it's just a conversation it's not a formal interview they are very friendly and you'll feel relaxed during the interview and please put down in the comment section whether you are applying for your ch or whether you are applying for your ing i would love to know that and if this video brought any value please make sure to give a thumbs up and share this video with your friends i'll come back with another video next week till then keep fixing